So as a biologist, you're always interested in how animals are adapted to their environment. And Svalbard ptarmigan have, have extreme adaptations because they live in such an extreme place high up in the Arctic. It's light all day in summer and in winter it's about minus 20 and it's completely dark and covered in snow. And what they do is something very unique and something very special for a bird. They actually double their body mass uh, from summer to winter. And this is something that we're interested in, trying to understand how they cope by gaining this extra body mass. If you think about putting a backpack on or carrying a heavy load, you notice that you, it's, very, it's very hard work, you know, if you bring in some shopping or something. It's a lot of energy to do this. So if you've got a natural animal model that can gain body mass yet still function efficiently, this is what we're primarily interested in studying. The way we're able to study this is we actually train these birds to run on a treadmill. So we have them running inside a, a clear perspex box. And by analysing the air in the box, when the bird's running at different speeds and when the birds are thin in summer and fat in winter, we're then able to then calculate the amount of energy that these birds use to run and move around under these different conditions. The two things you've found about these birds so far are that they're extremely efficient at moving around. And especially in summer, when they actually switch to running around, they actually experience a drop in energy cost. So they're able to do this extremely efficiently. And this probably relates to the males having to run around, chase after females during the mating season. And the other interesting adaptation we see in these birds is that in winter, when their body mass has doubled and they're very fat, they stop running around. They would prefer to walk or to, to groucho run. But they're also able to experience an energy saving in doing this as well. So they also have adaptations for efficient moving in winter when they're very fat. Ptarmigan have the same gaits that we see in humans. So at slow speeds they walk and at high speeds they aerial run. The difference between the two gaits is that during aerial running you have your feet off the ground and as you travel through the air and your foot hits the ground again for the next stride the tendons in your legs operate like springs, so you can imagine um, there's a spring just, you know, like a pogo stick in your leg. The spring is compressed as your body weight falls onto that leg, and as you launch again for the next step, that spring springs you forward and you continue running. The difference between birds and humans is that birds have a gate, a third gate between walking and running, which we call grounded running and this gait shows characteristics of both walking and aerial running. In the ptarmigan what we found was we get the drop in energy expenditure with walking speed and then the line flattens out, the energy expenditure flattens out and continues flatly through, all the way through grounded running and then when the bird switches to aerial running we get another drop in the energy expenditure. So we can see that the benefit for switching from grounded running to aerial running is actually you are saving energy. So what we've got with the Svalbard rock ptarmigan is we've got a natural animal model that is able to survive and cope extremely well in an extreme environment with large fluctuations in body mass. So what we're hoping is that the results that we've been able to get from this study are going to have strong implications for our understanding of things like how to improve animal welfare and the welfare of broiler chickens in, in particular.